guys, and welcome to my new channel, After Dark Fairy Tales. On this channel, I will be narrating weird and scary stories from author submissions. Anyone can submit a story to me. It can be sci-fi, horror, or fantasy. I can't guarantee that I'll narrate every story, but I'll try to read as many as I can. I plan to read a story each week, hopefully. I created this channel to narrate awesome stories. I also want you, as the listener, to enjoy my narration. I know my channel is fairly new, and I know it's not perfect. About five years ago, I have created a channel. And if I seem a little bit rusty, just please be patient with me. Oh, I also want to say please forgive me for not having any social media outlets connected to this channel. I don't want my social media outlets to distract from my narration and the great stories submitted to me by authors. The only account connected to my channel is my Patreon. Please donate to my Patreon if you can. Your support will let me know that you're enjoying this channel and it would mean so much to me. And it will also allow me to upload more content. If you like to hear me narrate your story, please submit your story to my email address. It's afterdarkfairytales at gmail.com. You can find it in my about page and in the description box below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like. Today's fairy tale I have for you is called Dying Perfume. It's a creepy tale there was written by an author who liked to be known by his initials, which is S.W. I am honored that the author wants me to narrate his story, and I will do my best to bring his haunting tale to life. Please sit back and enjoy the story, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to tickle that bell icon so you receive all the latest dark fairy tales. So are you guys ready for dark dying perfume? Here we go. Sleep paralysis is a devastating condition. I was seven when I first had sleep paralysis. My mother told me, my mother tucked me in that night. I could remember the citrus fragrance of her perfume. Her scent would always comfort me. After she tucked me in, I quickly drifted off to sleep. The night seemed quiet, but the peaceful atmosphere in my bedroom didn't last. I woke up around midnight. A smothering sweat drenched my little body. I couldn't move my arms and my legs. I could only move my eyes and my lips. It took my eyes some time to adjust to the thick darkness in my room. While my eyes were struggling to see, that's when I heard it. I could hear it snorting. A dreadful feeling came over me when I heard the inhuman sound. I could see someone standing in my closet after my eyes adjusted. It peeked at me from behind my closet door. It stood there for a minute, snorting at me. When it lurched out of my closet, I finally saw its full body shape. Its elongated arms stretched out like tree branches. It was tall, but it had a feminine shape. It looked like a deformed, seven-foot-tall, naked woman. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. It felt like something paralyzed my vocal cords. After the shadowy figure stepped out of my closet, it stood in the corner of my room with its arms out. It would release guttural snorting sound every few, every few minutes. The sound was sickening. It reminded me of someone hawking and spitting on the ground. I could see this figure. I'm listening to the horrible noises it's making while I'm paralyzed. The moonlight came in through my bedroom window. It illuminated a part of the shadow woman's arm. Her skin looked like mud. It didn't look burnt, just darker than dirt. All I could see was her one arm stretched out across my bedroom wall bathed in the moonlight. My mind kept trying to figure out what she was. 
I thought I was looking at a demon for the first time, or possibly the devil. Movement occurred, but it wasn't movement for me. I still couldn't move my body, no matter how hard I tried. It felt like invisible hands were holding my arms and legs down. The movement came from the shadow woman. I watched in horror as she made a step toward the foot of my bed. She would take one step and then she'd hesitate for a minute before taking her next step. Her awkward hesitation sent more chills through my body than her measured baby steps. I knew she was going to kill me if I didn't move. Frustration tortured me just as bad as my fear. I didn't know what this thing was or why it was in my bedroom. I didn't know what it wanted. The scary stories my dad told me about the boogeyman came back to came back to me. So I had this naked creature creeping toward me while I'm thinking about my dad's story and how he told me that the boogeyman captures children at night and he never come back. Thanks a lot, Dad. I wanted to move so badly. I wanted to scream. It felt like I was fighting my body. The voice in my mind yelled at my body telling me to move. The dark woman mocked me with her hesitant steps. She inched closer and closer to the foot of my bed with her arms stretched wide open. A crazy thought went through my head. Since I couldn't move my body, I thought maybe my feelings would be numb. I assumed the creature would viciously attack me, but at least I wouldn't feel the pain. I could see her long fingernails pointing out at me, and I knew those fingernails would be the first thing to dig into my body. No pain. Please, no pain. This is what I kept telling myself. Just be calm, Miranda. When the monster grabs you, you won't feel it. It won't hurt. Your body is numb, so you won't feel a thing. Tears were in my eyes while I was telling myself this. I wanted my mom to save me. I wanted to see my mom's face and I wanted to smell her perfume. I wanted to call out to my dad. My dad told me to never be afraid of anything, and that's what I tried to do. Time was running out for me. My urge to move was so strong that I started imagining that I could move my arms and legs. I thought I could move my arm, but it was just an hallucination. This was torture. Why was this happening to me? I was just a kid. I just turned seven and now I was going to die on the day after my birthday. I'll never go to high school and meet new friends. I'll never graduate from college. I'll never get married. I'll never find out what it's like to be a mom. The best thing I could do was close my eyes. I didn't want to see it attack me. I just buried my eyelids in my tears. I said a prayer that my mother taught me. My lips and my voice were still useless, so I had to say the prayer in my head. The prayer repeated in my mind. My mom and dad taught me to believe in God. I needed God to save me. My mother always told me I was God's child, and he had his angels watching over me. I wanted his angels to save me that night, and I didn't see them. A demon was lurking itself toward my bed and God was just going to sit there and watch this demon kill his child? My young mind couldn't understand what was happening. I thought the dark figure was a demon, a little girl who knew for sure she would die in her bed. More chills traveled up and down my spine when I opened my eyes to see the giant shadow woman standing over the foot of my bed. She changed her position. Before I closed my eyes, her arms were spread out as if she wanted to hug me. When I opened my eyes, she was standing motionless in front of me with her long finger over her lips. She was telling me not to make a sound. I couldn't make a sound anyway, so when I saw her holding her finger to my lips, it didn't matter to me. My situation turned upside down when I heard something else. Something unexpected happened. There was evil in my room, but the evil that stepped into my room was not the shadow woman. I remember hearing 
the news reports of missing children in the town. My mom wouldn't let me out of her sight whenever we would go to the store. There were reports of a crazed man in a clown costume going around abducting children. The police were searching for him, but they couldn't find him. But they found his aftermath. They found two missing children dead in a wooded area. As a child, I couldn't completely comprehend the danger. When you're a child, you want to play with your friends. I wanted to play with the other little girls in the neighborhood, but my mom would always keep me close to her side. On my birthday, I went to an amusement park, but I couldn't enjoy myself because I would go from being in my mom's arms to being in my dad's arms, constantly being carried around the park like a doll. I hated the smothering, overprotective behavior from my mother. She passed her paranoia to my father, who would normally allow freedom in my, in my playtime. My childhood freedom ended for a little while because of this child-killing bastard. Somehow, a killer entered our home through the basement window. He stayed hidden in our home for two days. This is how he broke into other people's homes. He would hack into their alarm systems and shut them off. Most of the missing children news reports involve children being taken from their homes in the dead of night without their parents even knowing what happened. A few days later, they find out that their child's naked body was found in a nearby pond or in a dumpster. Mothers and fathers were losing their babies in the, to a middle-aged, six-foot-five, 250-pound psychopath in a clown outfit. We didn't know that the psychopath clown broke into our home two days ago was hiding in the basement. I was the only child, so he thought one little girl in the house would be easy prey. He picked the wrong house that night. I heard him creeping down the hallway, right outside my bedroom door. His footsteps were quiet, but clumsy. The hardwood floor in the hall would always creak. My bedroom door creaked open, and I saw this tall, shadowy, st standing hunched over in my doorway. I remembered hearing my pounding heart. My eyes shifted between the killer clown and the dark shadow woman. I couldn't believe I was seeing these two nightmarish figures standing in my bedroom. One figure was evil, while the other was good. I saw his clown makeup. He had a red painted nose and he wore a pair of sunglasses over his chalky white face. I could see he had a beard. He had on a pink afro wig and he was shirtless. He had an opposing physique, like a wrestler. I also saw a massive tattoo of a wuss face on his chest. The large butcher knife he clutched in his right hand immediately caught my eyes. Even in the darkness, I could see the knife's serrated blade gleaming. He was so big that he blocked out my doorway. I didn't know what to do. There was nothing I could do but just lay there, helpless. I started imagining that I could scream for help. My imaginations were cruel. I hated my body for not moving. I hated my voice for not letting me scream. He knew I was awake because he spoke to me. Hi there, little princess. I'm your new friend. Your mommy went away and she asked me to take care of you. When he said my mom went away, my heart sunk deep into my chest. As he got closer to my bed, I could see something dripping off the knife and I didn't know what it was. When the child killer spoke to me, his voice didn't fit his body. His voice sounded androgynous. It had a deceivingly calm, feminine quality. It's terrifying to see a mountainous man in clown makeup talk softly down to you through a teenage girl's voice. I kept thinking about Pennywise from the movie It. But imagine Pennywise if he was shirtless, the body of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I closed my eyes again. 
when I saw the killer towering over my bed, getting ready to bring his butcher knife down on my face. I expected to feel cold, sharp steel sliced through my nose, but none of that happened. I shut my eyes, but I couldn't keep them shut for long. The child killer had so much of my attention that I forgot about the shadow woman who was still standing at the foot of my bed. I remembered hearing the man scream out a curse word, and then I heard a snap. I could still make out through the darkness what was happening. I saw the killer clown's arm hanging in another direction. I'll never forget his guttural, blood-curling scream that pierced my ears. His scream echoed throughout our home. I thought that even the neighborhood could hear him. What happened next made me almost pass out from shock. I saw the dark shadow woman lifting the child killer by his throat. She hurled him into a wall and a penetrating thud shook my bedroom. I kept hearing the man begging for his life and he sounded so pathetic. He kept screaming, what are you? Please don't kill me, ma'am. But the dark woman had no mercy on him. She bludgeoned him with his knife. I watched her break both of his legs. She punched him in his chest so hard that I heard the bones in his chest cave in. I heard his ribcage cracking. After a few minutes, his verbal pleading became whimpering moans of agony. I didn't know that you could break the bones in a human body in so many ways. After twisting the bones around in his arms and shattering the bones in his knees, I watched the dark woman raise the child killer off his feet again. She held him over her head before shoving the butcher knife into his throat and nailing him to my wall, literally. I never blinked as I stared at what happened to the killer. I almost felt sorry for the sick son of a bitch. No, not really. The dark lady made him pay for all the children he abducted, and she made him pay for his attempt to kill me. After the violence ended in my bedroom, I watched as the shadow woman moved toward my bed. She stuck out her arms again while moving toward me. It looked like she was floating in slow motion. My heart was still pounding, even when I felt her clawed fingers breezing through my hair. When she touched my face, I could smell a familiar fragrance. It was that citrus aroma from my mother's perfume. I couldn't understand why the shadow figure smelled like my mom. I didn't understand it until later. The shadow woman hovered hovered over me. Her lips stroked my forehead. She caressed my face for a few minutes, and then she vanished when I heard my father's panicked voice coming from downstairs. I didn't want to believe what I s- that I saw blood on the killer's knife, but it was blood. It was my mother's blood. That asshole stabbed my mother to death right before he made his way up the stairs toward my bedroom. He left my mother's body lying in the kitchen. My father stepped out of the house to get a few things at the store. When he came back home an hour later, he found my mom's body lying in a pool of blood. Her lavender sleeveless nightgown was soaked in red. My father cried out when he saw her body. I heard him running up the steps, crying out my name. When he bolted into my room, I was already in his arms before he could switch on my bedroom light. He saw the man's body nailed to my wall and he lost his breath. I told him what happened and what I saw. He couldn't believe it, but he had no choice. He knew that a little girl like me didn't have the strength to nail a 250 pound man to a wall. My father called the police and when they arrived, they asked him a few questions. The police asked me some questions too. They asked me some, they gave me some candy I told them everything. Like my father, they stared at me. A policewoman caressed my face and she said, It's okay, sweetie. You just had a traumatic experience. Who you saw in your bedroom was just a good Samaritan wearing a dark costume. 
None of the police officers believed that I saw a dark shadow woman. They all believed that my trauma caused me to hallucinate. They even told me I might have seen my father killing the man. And I told them that my father wasn't in the house. I heard him telling my mother that he was going to the store. I heard him kiss my mom before leaving the house. Those cops couldn't believe my story. They had tons of sympathy for me, but I wanted my mother more than their sympathy. I miss my mother, and I couldn't stop thinking about her fragrance. I found the perfume she wore while moving some boxes around in my attic. That sweet fragrance took me back to that night. I believe the dark figure I saw in my bedroom that night was my mother, a dead version of her. I'm 36 years old now, and I think my mom, I think about my mom every day. I got married to a kind and beautiful man, and we had a son. My little boy is five years old. He has his mom's hazelnut eyes and his daddy's lips and dimples. I try to be an excellent mother and I'm very protective over my little one, just like my mother was protective over me. Every night, I tuck my son into bed, and I read him a bedtime story. One night, I told him about what happened to his mom when she was seven years old. He looked scared after I told him the story. My son is afraid of the dark, but I told him not to worry. I told him that a mother's love and protection can reach beyond death. I told him I'd always be there to protect him. I told my baby not to be frightened if he sees a dark, shadowy woman standing in the corner of his bedroom. I told him she'll watch over him while he sleeps. I also told him not to panic if he wakes up suddenly, unable to move his body. Sleep paralysis is scary at first, but I told my baby that his paralysis would be a sign, letting him know that the shadow woman is there to protect him from the things that go bump in the night. There was one thing I didn't tell my little boy. I didn't tell him that a dark shadowy woman standing in the corner of his bedroom might be his mommy if she dies the way her mother did. So, did you guys enjoy that little creepy tale? I hope you did. I'll try to upload more stories each week and if you guys would like me to narrate your story, please feel free to send a story to my email address. I want to say that a lot of horror narrators inspired me to create this channel. Horror narrators such as Dr. Creepin, who read a few of my stories, and I'm very honored that he did. I enjoyed his voice, and I, I'll admit, I'm no Dr. Creepin. And I know the guy sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch. And I'm a little jealous about that, but that's okay. As I was saying, Dr. Creepin and also a guy named Richard Weil who does bedtime stories, both of their channels can be found in my subscription page. I hope you guys enjoyed this tale. And I'll try to upload more stories, hopefully each week. I don't know if I can, but I'll do my best. If you guys want to hear more from me, please just let me know and subscribe if you can. And don't forget to tickle that bell icon. Alright then, bye bye.